I'm just going to introduce you to Tongo Eisen Martin, um, who is a poet I, you know, became aware of about only about a month or two ago, and got to see him read, and uh, you know, really, really love what he's doing with combining a lot of different poetic strategies, you know, um, like. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, let him read, and just uh, I just I just really really dig the work, and uh, what I partially like about it too is that it gets pretty abstract at times, but it always is grounded in like a very political situation, and not just political in some kind of distant ways, but like when I was reading a book, I, I even the poems that don't actually say Sixth and Market, I'm picturing that as like the place of poems. You know? And I know a couple more set in New York, maybe a couple more in Jackson, you know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I picture that as, as the place, and it's, and it really, even when you don't say it, it evokes that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it really, you know, deals with, amongst other things, I mean, I was somebody who was on the streets for a couple of years myself, and uh, one of the things that's great about it, there's so many things, and I don't want to just single one thing out, is that, it really humanizes homeless people in a way that often homeless people are, are considered less, you know? Like, as if somehow there's this like, line between non-homeless and homeless or something that's like set in stone and what that means, and you know, it's, it gets into questions of that in a pretty deep way, but... Uh, so as you listen to him, I'm just like, you know, feel free to take notes or, you know, ask questions or anything about what he's doing, you know, even if it's just like, you know, questions like when did you start publishing or whatever, but like, you know, think about how the words kind of like float in space and, you know, when I hear something out loud, I usually have to read it later in order to really see the words and let them sink in a little more, and, you know, because one thing about Tongo is he writes the kind of poem that you, you have to read more than once. You don't have to read more than once, but you kind of want to read more than once because you get to the end of it and you go like, Wait, how did we get here? Uh, it started out somewhere totally different, and you know, and it makes you kind of slow down the process and kind of look back over it, too. Um, and uh, anyway, and there's a lot of humor, I think, too. I think there's a lot of, you know, it's maybe what I would call gallows humor a lot of times. I love that kind of humor, like it's dealing with some heavy shit, but you know, sometimes humor is one of the best ways to deal with heavy shit. So anyway, okay. Is this nice? <laughs> is, this, is this nice and central? Yeah. yeah right. So. Um, you can tell by my tires that not everybody who's driven with me is still alive. Also, that I like my drinks neat, bottled, and in a bus stop. Also that we're drowning in precinct paper, department store floor plans, and applications to the moon. Now, we can change the color of our snot from gifted to heart attack and tell you about ashes, but where are all these angels coming from smelling like the cigarette that fails? And why is the man on the safe side of these headlights freezing up? You got nothing to say at my funeral, I'll speak on your behalf, heroin in my smile. Uh, Mountain made a flatland robbery among some things on my mind. The last store run in the name of shared afterlife Friday to the filter, I'm a tall tale on earth. But here's to that angel that never appeared to America in a night of dog paddle in a batch of hangovers looking for a home. You know, a liar wouldn't have lived this long. That's my humor when fences speak. Holding a pair of rambling dice that got unique tempers and young souls that say shut up about our city. Here, tidal months crash over a coast while lie. The street's teeth are in pieces. There's reservoir art on the faces of stragglers. It's sad news from back home that mean we have to grow up on his behalf. Stumble back to a car full of last stand. The truth is stale, but still liquor. Mission Street would be proud of me. I'm a mural man, you know, almost organized. Remember when my lungs would wake up last walking all morning. If it was work, that meant I'm three decades homeless. 
the reservoir art is all I ever see. And I'm 2,000 miles from my first fight. Maybe no one really survived. Maybe I wrote my first poem for no reason. A tour guide through your robbery, he also is. Cigarette saying, look what I did about your silence. Ransom water and box spring gold, this decade is only for accent grooming, I guess. Uh, Ransom water and box spring gold, the corner store must die. War games, I guess, all these tongues, rummage junk. Now, the start of mass destruction begins and ends in restaurant bathrooms that some people use and other people clean. Uh, you telling me it's a rag in the sky? Waiting for you, yes. We've written a scene, we set a stage, you know, we should have fit in warehouse jobs for communists, but now I'm on corridor and hallway have walked into our lives. Now the whistling is less playful and the barbed wire overcrowded too, my dear. If it is not a city, it is a prison. If it has a prison, it is a prison, not a city. <laughs> and when a courtyard talks on behalf of military issue, all walks take place outside of the body. Dear life to your left, a medieval painting to your right. Uh, none of this really makes an impression. Crop people living in thin air, you have five minutes to learn how to see through this breeze. When a mask goes sideways, barbed wire becomes the floor, barbed wire becomes the roof, 40 feet into the sky becomes out of bounds. When a mask breaks in half, mind which way the eyes go. You know, they killed the world for the sake of giving everyone the same backstory. We're watching Gary, Indiana fight itself into the sky. Old pennies for win, for that wind feeling you get before the hood goes up and over your headache. Pennies that stick together, mocking all aspirations. Stuck together pennies was the first newspaper I ever read, along with the storefront dwelling army that always lets us down. Where the Holy Spirit favors the back room, souls in a situation that offer a hundred ways to remain a loser. Souls watching a clock, hoping their eyes don't lie to sad people. What was we talking about again? The narrator asked the graveyard. Ten minutes flat, said the graveyard. The funeral only took ten minutes. Never tell that to anyone again. Hey, you just going to pin the 90s on me? All 30 years of them? Then why should I know the difference between sleep and satire? The pyramid of corner stores fell on our heads. We died right away. That building wants to climb up and jump off another building. These are downtown decisions. Somewhere on this planet, it's August 7th, and we running down the rust, thinking one more needs to come with me. What evaporated on Earth so that we could be sent back down? <laughs> the end. <laughs> <laughs> The first, this, this poem is called The Simplicity of Talent. The first cigarette makes this parking lot my bedside. The second cigarette makes this parking lot my front pocket. Uh, next, I hold the witness like a newborn, though half-hearted. Uh, brittle teeth by my art, watch how we talk in depopulated circles. You caught me, said the hangman to the condemned. Caught me red-handed, <laughs> but the hangman's hand kept moving nevertheless. Uh, biting flags eastbound, another familiar sound effects, a revolutionary would call us a landless fire. The night train agrees that these are my keys. I'm just admiring your fabric, Lord. My art is rational, therefore my life is in danger. Uh, traveling up the tap this time, and it looks like water was never here, just jail noise and the jail noise politicians speak. You know, this world is weak. Lost his graffiti too many times. I tell the witness, all characters are in motion regardless of what that day did to your disposition. I also left that piece of good news in the ashtray next to my nickname. You know every room has a kitchen in it? Every life has company to feed. Every room has a rumble in the corner. Eighth grade heroin in my hand along with pieces of an uncle, a purgatory, grease fire, got us worried. The phone rings in 1988 and the epoch begins when a mother hangs up. This is not writing poems. This is wishing carloads well. Here comes the tap water whistling past our heads. Institution tile under brake pedals, matching white watches, painted on palms for smash and grab recollections. People who are related by ballot. Hot plate failures, fishing for proletarians, the matchstick that is a draft card by the time the loner finishes sweeping the train. Also related by ballot, strips of of underpaved streets hanging, hanging like, like strips of film in thin air. I miss the carpentry more than the religion. I tore the 
to tattoo out my uncle's picture and lent it to my friends, one left cross at a time. You know, like mine behind my back. They said the child would do better upside down. The child's cake party was in the precinct. Mainstream tune playing upside down, a t-shirt with their face on it, printed on a cop stunt. 28 hours later, a headrest would do. The city rain feels like clientele. I dozed on the back of a bus and woke in the mind of a three-story man. God wants you here with that crowbar in your hand. All of the world is a third floor. Seasons invent themselves, but we invent the underground. Cause and effect, nothing but a casual venue I once played. He decided not to kill me like giving loose change. Don't teeter now, tall man. I was nobody at point blank range. <clears throat> nobody, finally again. Lung first, I fell. A love, then a rule, then a hate. Dance moves within murder attempts, within dance moves. Lean back and be celebrated by small people, he said. The clothes on my life teacher needed new patches. Uh, sit back and disrespect it all. I've given up on counter-revolution, I said. Well, then here's your weapon, little bank. And that's our father, you writing graffiti on. Horn players beat him up, and everyone left the altercation a better person. Knowing what you know now, would you still have written fortunes on the bottom of church shoes and put them back on the rack? How does everyone think that a rich guy is their twin? Along with other tantrums is my cue. Fortune teller half sleeps. Fortune teller half sleeps while talking about a mirror treading all over the posters in my childhood room and how cold calculation mothers nothing and a vision of chess pieces and chains. And he's, he says, then, my friend, you will have fear. And then you will have form. And then. <laughs> And put, put it another way. <clears throat> um, okay, so apparently, too much of San Francisco was not there in the first place. <laughs> this dream requires more condemned Africans. Or put another way, state violence rises down. Or put another way, uh, still life is just getting warmed up. Uh, or army life is looking for a new church and ignored all other suggestions. Or folktale writers have not made up their minds as to who is going to be their friends. You know, this is the worst downtown yet. And I've borrowed a cigarette everywhere. And I've taken many a walk to the back of a bus that led on out the back of a storyteller's prison sentence, then on out the back of slave scars, but this is my comeback face. I left my watch on the public bathroom sink and took the toilet with me. I threw it at the first bus I saw eating single mothers half alive. It flew through the bus line number, then on out the front of the White House. Hopefully you find comfort downtown, but if not, we brought you enough cigarette filters to make a decent winter coat. A special species of handshake lets all know who's king and what's the lifespan of uniform cloth. This coffin needs to quit acting like those are birds singing. Rusty nails have no wings. Have no voice other than that of a white world dying. There are book pages in the gas pump. Hey, catchy, isn't it? The way three nooses is the rule, or the way potato sack masks go so well with radio codes, or the way condemned Africans fought their way back to the ocean, only to find waves made of 1920s burnt up piano parts, European backdoor deals, and red flowers for widows who spent all day in the sun mumbling in San Francisco. Red flowers, but what's the color of a doctor visit? There are book titles. In the streets, book titles like Hero, You'd Make a Better Zero, or A Fur Coat Lady, The President is Dead, or Pay Me Back in Children, or They Hung Up Their Bodies in Their Own Museums, and other book titles pulled out of a drum solo. Run here, Hero, Lied to Hiding Place, All the Bullets in Ten Precincts Know Where to Go, Ain't No Heaven Nor Any Other Good Idea in the Sky. Politics means that people did it and people do it. Understand that when it's San Francisco and other places that was never really there, I bet this ocean thinks it's an ocean, but it's not. It's just 60 Mission Street. All know who's king. King of thin things. You know, like America, I'm proud to deserve to die. I'm going to eat my dinner extra slow tonight in this police state candy dispenser you all call a neighborhood. No set of manners goes unpunished. Never mind a murderer's insomnia or the tea kettle preparing everyone for police sirens. Guided by teeth goes this country. There's a cow's mouth on a flag. A peculiar notepad holds street life dear, but the writer is not here. He's somewhere talking to tombstones about the good old days, a splashing reborn water on his latest face, or wondering how his old gun is doing in the afterlife. They wonder how much death trap is in those gas station aisles. It got to be a million dollars a day on this concrete island. New engine in the moon, why it never goes down? I mean, 72 straight hours of night. 
at least according to everyone's posture around here. You know, 8.30 in the morning is really 30 minutes to closing. The city shuts down for a sleepy rat race. Elevators shoe shuffle to the nearest heaven, laughing with rats the whole way up. It scabs everywhere in puddles of city and concentrated schools and TV lit warm rooms. You know, the light reveals military fatigue when it hits just right on the ties that are wrapped around the necks of lazy white guys. Empire is too easy, baby. You tent at the walls all summer if you feel like it. The best way for a target to move is shooting back. Running for a tree line made of freeways. Wisdom says against a war machine on Tuesday, you stand no chance. But may we be the last poor men to play it safe. Cow's mouth on the flag. A politician raises his hand, and the crowd shows their teeth. An oligarch raises his hand, little girls are not safe outside. You are all high, depressed, and comrades in function. 15 minutes of closing in the city, then survive another rebellion. Stay down. You know, we just paying dues by trash fires, not just anybody can set. Hey, don't you love how deadly things whisper in the moment, and men kill like feathers fall with everybody screaming inside? The writer knows that death is not a matter of dignity, rather humor. In a house that smells like roach races, nuclear percentages on torn stoves, I mean, here life never was. Just lazy matches and manic inhumanity, hands rushing away from life, torn stoves. What are we doing here? Surviving. For no reason in particular. Because, see, nobody gone far today. Nobody will go far tomorrow. Trust me, hell and heaven cannot count. Strange gardens where secondhand clothes play. And concrete wishes to be human so that it could be a cannibal. <laughs> and where drains wish to be human, so that they could be worthy arms for you to die in. Uh, you know, greet them all, grandson. Prepare for the day when every child is coming. Don't say we ghosts didn't write you a poem. Don't say we didn't dig your life. Remember the shotgun by the coat rack that everybody in the house knows how to use? Remember the tightrope made of needles for walking in between driveways and man-made best friends? Go ahead, grandson. Tune the street again. Never mind this country. Kills musicians first. A broken neck night, scarred neck life. If these walls could write lyrics, they say, what's your angle, angel eyes? 30 to 50 rounds pass by on a street with no daughters. This street has no sons. Just young prisoners of war in a racist city that means to make capital. And we know so much. We know it all. We were stood against walls. Who's was on the third cross around here? Cow's mouth. Salivating over the street. And that is the story of why we aim at teeth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the end. <laughs> so, I'm gonna take one more pass. All right. So, there were hammers in my cradle, which made some people scared to check on me. Because <laughs> God would have a devil, and State Street would have a resurrection. And I would be a menace, menace to veins, veins that the city protects with precinct flesh. You know, people actually work in Mary here. The sun actually comes up. Have you heard the one about ghetto dwellers? Bang. They all duck. Well, look what the heathen drug in. What is that, my bullet? Who is that, your son? Have you heard the one about last names? Did you know that late night talk is the car door to the soul? <laughs> I don't think we've been here before. Some type of criminal heaven controlling every headlight for miles if the journey has pain. It's the way I came. My name is on this seat. You know, royalty among mimes would be my right hand, or it'd be a brand new hammer, a wolf traveling at the speed cities in, interpretations of shot men. You know, hands, hands are the only place souls are actually found. <clears throat> and fists get a road trip too. And maybe you should mind me. Or maybe I paid too much attention to this black coat as I was growing up in a wrong lit room. At least the walls was nice, guys. At least I had this seat. At least I got this ocean when our words freeze and central time is up. When my family relapses into suicidal neighborhoods and can't depend on me. When black children are sad. When there are guns everywhere. When death is here and I'm a new kind of nearsighted. And she's a new kind of lovely death is. Right in the front yard passage, people getting beat up. I say, I'm not paranoid enough, man. You got a taste for violence. I've winked at three funerals. The Lord gave his only begotten temper to me. Death knows me by nickname. I call it nothing cute. Lord, let me see the enemy in my circle. Let me see that the enemy is my circle. Let my circle kill me. Shit, let me not stay dead. See, I know who I am down to the street sign. Streets pass my life back and forth. Pass me under gambling jokes and cigarettes, and here I am thinking this is what you call driving at night. Or this is what you call 35 miles away. Freeway and all smeared all over the city. Tell me how you write letters. How do you write letters with a building on top of your head? With a building feasting on you? with a thousand backs turned to your kids. 
without her subtle gesture to interpret in the middle of a backfire resurrection with a president who was out to kill you. Now, I only got one gun to speak of still. I sleep good in August and nobody talks back in traffic. An interestingly handsome bastard had to match a violent song. I mean, I'm like a hi-hat on its own mother list. Though less of a child project, tiles become tires, choirs suck down liquor. Five floors become audience for a dancing killer. You just a dancing killer. Midwater walk, outline all over the state. I've seen a bullet become a cheapskate. Bodies in a bargain, handsome but hardened. Prison air, Spanish sales, black as well. Run, tell about my level. And what you see me do to water. And what you see me do to men. Last of a dying group of friends, you know, another city in. From a two floor skyline, an abandoned house once talked to me. They said, young man, you are heroic at 10 years old. Among 20 generations of friends, you know, friends will free fall away, free fall up. Friends will free fall the walls with fifth grade speed to industrial paint behind secondhand fences. You know, young man, use quick knife tone, you know, be, be bone and brass, be last laugh music. You are always leaving, always want to change the clothes from the door. A life and escape. Two floor skyline says you're the guy that dies in the middle. The friend of uh, more blues than skin. The face that cheap hotel schizophrenics can place with 90 mile per hour right eyes among dry heat killers, once children three feet high and roaming and repeating and aiming at cotton mirrors and hang on breathing walls. You are 10 years old, tagging along, yawning at well-lit violence, whistling tool shop songs. You will be useful. You will be high and alone, uh, flying on a nephew dragon from a $20 family in a sky that calls itself just more soil. Around walls that are just walls, except these walls suggest you make wives out of highs and currency. Here the air is polite to sleepy glass and bullying walls. Young man, you will come to admit that sometimes suicide is power. Because some people live stronger as ghosts. And sometimes the afterlife empties. Billions of souls enter objects like playground bullets and abandoned door frames. Even broken glass will prove it has voice too. The 24 hours behind your back. And look over your shoulder right now. Can you hear it? The sound of drums punching themselves out. The sound of piano parts learned in between assassination attempts. Be bone and brass. Be bone enough for two souls. Man. Be invincible again. Suffer red-eyed accents, professional fingertips, gifted victims, six in the morning beer, the first month of probation, <laughs> the shout at the wall. You should see these words that shouldn't be home. Man. Look behind you again. Be invincible again. Be windward. You know, be, be a sad machete. Be her son. Hey, be a thief. Still is back. Laugh too long, never look away. The afterlife will empty and walk you home. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. How y'all feel like one, one, one more or something like that? <laughs> All right. We had the funeral in the garage. But I think he was long gone. A narrator on distant rooftops smoking with new friends. From beyond the vigil skyline, serious footwork can be seen, especially when loose acquaintances look at the flowers and candles with like, opera violence on their minds. You know, introducing you to the colony when the concrete was in its prime and not for shuffles. Two different dates share the same daylight. We slow walk from the corner store into a flashback. Dust doing most of the talking, you know, talking about weird wars on the streets and whoever's fixing the drinks tonight. You know, whoever is must be suicidal. You see, there's a chessboard underneath these tough guys. From beyond the visuals jungle is the easy side of autobiography. You know, pretty interesting place to start a war from. Front yards are for having problems with the world. It's an easy range for the angel of everything under the sun. That's right. I can cut my throat with the sun. And hold your breath on my street if that's what you've always done. I'll tell you what his eyes say. They say all dust eventually has to be human. In his pockets is winter already. Knuckle, then wrist, you know, then some. In, uh, in, in street green letters here lies in half asleep young skin, a tattered page one. Page one. Um, all staircases are open air and will be the first to talk if the poor so will it. Page two, uh, just pieces of subtitle, mouths talk last. Page three, someone's dead already. Someone has taught him a sign. 
Page four, every system is suicidal. The poor soul wills it. Bust loops its root. Last stop already, man, let me sleep again. It's all staircase here. And I remember when he was eye to eye with the lowest branch, crying breath into the hand of an avenue. Our shirts made somewhere in the land of first hand. Trash wasn't yet trash. You know, running away really wasn't running away. You know, my shoes would witness an informal prayer. Something like, I know you see me. What should I call you? I'll never be anything you need to forgive. And we've been New Heaven years ago. Heaven becomes our street's shoulders, which are his, which is a homegrown cadence on a city bus. Rubber and brief eyes. He was the saint of strays. You know, the first story you learn in San Francisco. Moving with sleight of street, which is his. My little brother slides. The smoke says still. You know, a lot of God can happen in three seconds. Not much heaven, though. Here's, here's a man before a fight. A leave me alone type character emerging from the penniless death of a one way street fiction. That's just a fancy way of saying I'm gonna make it even if I gotta drive backwards. All I got is chord changes and a thousand backhands. Driving the street like I'm choking it. Car full of nephews, hasn't been a son since November, and there hasn't been a street I can't choke to death. This city better back down. You see this gun on the table? And something about staring until it all feels stable. Why wouldn't I protect everyone? All my death sleep, like you said, my son better be quick. My daughter better shoot first, because, see, we fall for no one. No, we fall for nothing. OK, the first thing you'll feel is a heat, this lady would tell me, telling me about possession. Drink life need is what I mostly hear. And most of the world leaves me alone. To breathe smog like a giant, to go to jail every once in a while when the genocide kicks up in late May. When politicians have too easy a time, I'm gassing backwards out of one-way street in honor of myself and in honor of you, if you understand the nature of the world. How long I've been just like my father? One hell of a resemblance, says the anxiety of the neighborhood. This is crossroads, crossroads narrative. Some of us crossroads, they got in the habit of turning back. Turn back only to find themselves remembering me, but not my last words. A man before a fight, you feel the heat. But there's nothing to keep in mind. There's nothing to remember. Really, there's nothing to be. It's just this moment, then another, then stare, then it all becomes stable, then the table legs go fuzzy, and Friday's an unfamiliar face peeking in the window. It's cool to panic for a second. Composure is wasted on your worst enemies. People are marked on that sidewalk. You're the only thing life size. Everybody knows this in a wire hanger empire when the blood stops walking. That feeling isn't father enough to be permission to fold. You better swing one more time. You know, that father of yours rose from the grave and said, just give me five more minutes. He said, running water is a myth. It's us who are running up, down, all alongside this water. And people don't rise from the grave. They not laid down, neither. It's us who flip all around their body. So beware when the people around you all look like they about to jump. It might be your time. You feel the heat. And when four walls demand to be four walls and the earth outside mutes, don't panic. Don't try to recreate the earth outside. Don't tell jokes to yourself. Don't even talk disrespectfully to the four walls. Instead, unclench your fist and walk away. There might be heaven if you understand the nature of the world. <laughs> but, um, <coughs> what are you, doing? you sure? How y'all feel? You know, all right? Uh, it might be over with, bro. <laughs> I can't tell, bro. It might be over. Do you have all your poems memorized? Nah, nah. Um, just, just, just. I mean, you know, probably, probably like fifteen, twenty, in the brain. Poems that I just feel like are kind of uh, m a little more communal than others, you know that I feel like people will find some of themselves in uh, or find something in or that are kind of fun for me to say. And, uh, and yeah, but it's, it's really like um, memorization is the best way for me to experience the poem as I read, like, because if I read it like this, I'm, it's distracting. You know, it's like I got to do two things at once. I got to deal with the realities of the poem and deal with the reality of holding up a paper, you know. And so it's it's just kind of like I can put more, uh, I can put more attention into what I'm doing, you know. 
So it's really selfish. <laughs> like it looked cool, you know, but it, it's 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 really the best. It's it's when I it's because because see when you write a poem, it's like it's an extremely neurotic process for a lot of people. Maybe not everybody, but for me especially, it's like writing a poem is weird. But then once it's done, then I can relax. And when I got it in my mind, then I can really poke around it and walk around inside of it. So. I mean, one thing I love about your reading style is that the way you go from fast to slow and go from loud to soft, you know, in, in a real musical sense that really gets the emotions that sometimes don't just on the page by themselves. Kind of like, I wouldn't necessarily know what tone to read one of your poems in on the page, but then when I hear it, it's like, oh, wow, that's, that's the part where he's really speeding up. <laughs> or that's, that's the part where his voice is getting more of a cry in it. And, and, and all those aspects that, that the reading of it brings to it. And I'm sure a lot of you probably found it a little too fast at times, right, to get everything. What did you get? Well, well, man, if you got like, like, if you got everything, like, if you get every single word, then it's, it's something is wrong. You know, because <laughs> <laughs> poetry is too quick. Even on a piece of paper, reading it, like uh, in in writing, poetry is like the quickest of the disciplines. It's just that it's it's because it's just a, like a free for all of thoughts. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like, you know, it's it's the the goal at least like when listening is not like oh let me try to get get everything, but just kind of like relax into the possibility of expanded perspective. You see what I'm saying? And I don't really like I don't really choreograph like what I'm gonna do. You know, it's like I just kind of go where it, it you know it's it, it's cues like there's either negative cues. Um, which aren't a bad thing, you know, what you, to, 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 to deal with what you're worried about or to deal with what you're feeling good about. So if in a moment it just feels good to speed up or that energy is there, then I go with it until it's time to let it go. You see what I'm saying? And then if, and, and sometimes, sometimes the slowdown is literally, is, is not even like to make a point, it's because that's how I'm genuinely feeling. If I genuinely feel like if I feel a little discombobulated in my mind myself, so let's say I run out real fast, or I'm moving through the poem real fast, I kind of lose a sense where I'm at too. You know what I'm saying? I lose a sense of where I'm at energy-wise, like emotionally, where are these people at who I'm bringing up, all this type of thing. So it's just like time just because I'm, I, I'll be up here just trying to survive. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, it say, say, I just start noticing things or something like that. Like, I just kept tripping. Like, y'all feet kept shifting, you know what I mean? It just kept tripping me out. So, 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 so it was just like sometimes, it, you know, and, and not, not in a, not in a, uh, not in like a negative way, but just, a, uh, you know, it, it slowed me down, you know? The objective is to not, like, there's no ideal state. You know, there's just kind of like what you're dealing with in the moment. So you're basically saying you read them differently every time. Right. Yeah. And you catch a wave and then sometimes, like, it's just, it's the willingness to let go. See, where people kind of get tripped up sometimes is like if you have a way of doing things that's successful, then you want to stay where you're strong at. Or you want to stay like well, you you done something and pe people made you feel good about it. You want to go back to that intoxication. You know what I'm saying? And when you... When you like that, you lose the possibility. You see what I'm saying? Because there's more to discover, right? If you're just like, fuck it, all right, I got it, but I got to let it go. Because you feel yourself, when you, see, when you feel the vision start to tunnel as, as opposed to expand, then, okay, it's time to let it go and go somewhere else, wherever I can be, you know? And the same thing happens on the page, too. Because like especially like if you're good at writing poems, it's just like it's like a good it feels good like a good outlet and all this type of shit. And then again, somebody tell you like you talented and you think you don't. And, and so it's just like and so you write in a relationship of intoxication as opposed to just okay, what's going on in my head right now? You know, 
the same rules apply on, on the page. It's just like the willingness to let go of your self-absorption. See what I'm saying? Well, so I, like, I like the way his work looks on the page, you know, too. It's, it's because it, it, he has a lot of white space, and sometimes, like, the margins will be justified on the right side instead of the left side. And, um, and that also kind of evokes, like, the, the speed and the slowness of it, too. Yeah. I can relate to it. Well, you guys heard me read my one poem. Well, you know, I was just going really fast, as fast as possible. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's... It's really good the way you're talking about the, um, the right. what about how's the revision process for you? Like, what, what, what's your attitude to that? And you know, believe it or not, like I'm really not trying to fool anybody. You know, like <laughs> like I'm not trying to. You know, like I, I like there's th th I, it. I, I feel like it's understandable. You know, uh, maybe not all in one sitting, but like there are people in there. There are, play, there are real people in there in the poems. There are real places in the poems. There's like reality in the poems. There's definitions of reality in the poem. You know what I mean? So when I actually, when I go back to revise, but see, I know I'm heavy handed on some weird, I know I'm weird too. So like when I go, I try to cut down on whatever I think is just too far out there. That's the first thing I edit for. Like what I'm like, but nobody gonna know what that means. And and it's and it's tricky because actually like one of the one of the one of the one of the traps of uh, of, of writing poems is some uh, sometime for some people like me was writing too many like inside jokes you know like it's witty but it's just because you know it you know how, like you and your friend got a joke it's only yeah, because yeah, yeah. only because y'all seen that one thing that one day and now right. that's you know what I mean it's like similarly you can have that relationship with the paper gives you that relationship with yourself and so now you're just like yourself laughing with yourself <laughs> you know or yourself impressing yourself you know what i mean as a as a post so like i go back i look for that type of stuff try to try to knock that stuff down and just make it more understand and then even like you know like so the one of the last things that happens is how i uh uh, uh what do you call it what i'm trying to say like the layout on the page, like how you talking about sometimes over here and over there and all this. It's just like trying to give people kind of like, you know, because it's like it's, it's, it's multi-voice or like or like somebody describing it, polyphonic. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like uh, uh, I was described. And, uh, and, and so I'm trying to illustrate it. Okay, this is somebody else talking. If we go over here, this is a different person talking. And over here, that's somebody else, you know. And then even kind of like the mentality of the person talking. Just like, okay, this is more of a, this is a, a, a voice that has kind of self-awareness and clarity. Or this is a voice that's just kind of like rambling along. This is a voice that has a little bit more intensity. This is an unconfident uh, voice. You know, the, the, these type of things. So you just try to, I try to illustrate it. So again, like my goal is just just try to make it as actually understandable. Believe it or not, I'm, trying, I'm really trying hard to make it understandable. You know, that 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 type of thing. That's the most important thing. You make sure it make because the reader is your friend, man. It, it, you know, there's it, the goal is not to mystify anybody. One question is, how often do you do like live readings, spoken word readings, or whatever? Uh -huh. Poetry is called readings, right? Anyways, yeah, yeah. yeah how, like, like, how how often? Meaning, like, monthly, a year, or whatever. Like, every few months. How often? Every, three three months. Like, like, if you break it, if you break it down on a month to month basis, it's like slow month will be like it could be like five or seven readings in a month. But then, like, if it heat up, you know. Get it, like 15, you could really have like 15 readings in a month, you know. But it depends. It's a weird thing, you know. With me, I don't know. Some people may have uh, something sy systematic going on where they, you know, they know what's going on. Me, I'm just kind of at the organic whim of something. I don't know, you know. So it's just like, it's just kind of like high, high and low tides. One of the poems seemed really long, like, like I don't know how many thousand more than a thousand words you seem like anyways what I'm asking is uh, do you 
do you practice? Do you have a way? Do you, do you say like a song or a certain thing that helps you remember? Or yeah, no, nah, you know what it is, man. It's 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 it's, it's really like the the thing is. So like within even like within a poem. Like for my poems are kind of like a series of runs, you know, um, and so it's just kind of like memorizing one run at a time. And then once you get the, and then once you get the poem, you know, then it's just having it one poem at a time. So actually, what I was just doing here was I would just keep going. Like I don't think one time was just one poem. Every time it was at least two poems. <laughs> there was at least two poems every time. But the 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 trick, the trick is really um, the trick is really like like you can practice something to yourself a million times and, and memorize it, but it's like as soon as you get in front of a person, even just one more person, it's like the whole thing changes, because you know we're defensive animals. You know what I mean? So it's like you know. To, to, to be able to recall the poem while dealing with your natural inborn paranoia, that's what takes the practice, that's where the practice comes in. So really it's like, it's almost in a way, there's nothing I can't, like it's not, there's no real way to practice. It's just like by just, uh, you know, getting up in front of other people as much as possible. If push comes to shove though, I'll call somebody up and bother somebody. <laughs> like I just put this poem in my mind, listen to it, this type of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it just sticks. I mean, you just do it over and over and over and it just sticks. And then it just gets to a, it just gets to an automatic, it just gets to a muscle memory. Yeah. Or it gets to a point where, where I can say it, similar, just how I, right now, I can blah, blah, blah at you and think at the same time, right? Because I'm lightweight thinking what I'm going to say next. I'm thinking about whatever else. You know, we all think and talk at the same time. But you get it to a point where you can say the poem and have a, <laughs> not everybody, some of us do. <laughs> and and you, get it to the, you get it to the point where you can say the poem and have a conversation in your head at the same time. That's, that's, and that, that, that gives me the internal freedom to make kind of these little adjustments so that I can be more honest with myself on like where I'm at. Do you change some of the words ever a little bit from what? Um, so like sometimes my, I might make a little tweak here and there, but like in the, like the percentage of tweaks next to like all the words that come out is pretty minuscule. You know, but it's just some, sometimes just to be more to be more respectful, you know what I'm saying? But you know, like sometimes there's contradictions, you know, like, um, I don't know, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of like hard to explain. But it's just like sometimes just to do better by, by people listening, I might make a little tweak from like, you know, it's hard to explain, but, but, over, but, o but overall it's, it's like not much changes. Just kind of like the delivery. How long have you been doing readings and, and writing poetry? I mean, are, did they kind of go ahead in hand? I think I just kind of got lucky because I, I read kind of charismatically. So it's just like people open their eyes to it and, you know, one thing will lead to another, you know. But... It's not. It's 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 like it's it's it's, it's nothing really that singular about me though. I just kind of got like a little, a little knack for it, but it's nothing that nobody can achieve. You know? Did anybody like influence you into wanting to do it? No poetry. Nah, man. You know when you got the knack for something, it's just like you see it and you start doing it. Mm -hmm.